Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 8. It's on elementary charge, which is the smallest unit of charge that an object can have. And it was determined by Robert Millikan in the Millikan oil drop experiment. And what he was doing was dropping oil through a little a hole and then using a microscope to see how he could change the voltage to make the oil drops hover. And as he did that, he found elementary charge. And what he found is that that charge was either no charge or a multiple of a positive x or an elementary charge or a negative x. Um, but it was never in the middle. In other words, charge is quantized. What that means is that charge smallest unit is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Sometimes positive, sometimes negative, but never in the middle. And so electric charge is quantized. What that means is it's in discrete units. And this was calculated to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. We now refer to this as elementary charge. And so if you're looking at protons and electrons, they're both going to have charge. In electrons, it's going to be a negative elementary charge. In a proton, it's going to be a positive elementary charge. Even though protons have a much larger mass, the charge is going to be the same. And so if we look at Millikan's experiment, what he had set up was an atomizer up here. It's kind of like squirting perfume out. What was being squirted out were these little drops of oil. Um, he then had a microscope down here and then two charged plates. And so he could look at the oil as it falls right down this hole right here. Um, and he could change the voltage applied to those plates. Uh, and then x-rays as well, and we'll get to those in a second. So let's look at one of these oils as it drops. And so what happens? Well, it's being acted on by gravity. And so if we look at that one drop of oil, there's a gravitational pull that's pulling it down. But as it falls, there's going to be air resistance as it moves through air. It's based on the viscosity of the air. And so he was able to figure out that all of these drops should fall. So if we take another drop right here, it'll just fall down to the bottom. But what he used was an x-ray tube. And what that x-ray tube would do is fire x-rays across that hole. And what it would do is it would knock electrons off, or sometimes certain atoms would gain electrons. We know this now that it's built on the, on the charge. But watch what happens if we take one of these and now drop it. What happens to it is it moves down, but then it's in electromagnetic field. And so since it's charged, it's being attracted to this positive charge up here. And so what Millikan could do is he could regulate the amount of that voltage and the oil would go up and the oil would go down and he could get it so it would balance out. And then he would just measure that voltage. And so once he did the physics of, um, okay, we've got a gravitational force down, we've got viscosity going up, but now we've got this electromagnetic charge. He was able to calculate, um, based on the size of that droplet, how much is this elementary charge. And so he determined it to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And so now we refer to that as the elementary charge. And he was like 1% off the value. So it's an incredible experiment. And so we can have charges of zero, no charge, or we could have elementary charges in the positive or elementary charges in the negative. In other words, there's charge quantization. What that means is you can't have a charge in the middle. You can't have like a half of a charge. Now, if you're really smart and you've watched all the videos so far, that might not make sense because when we were talking about a proton, a proton you know is made up of quarks and those quarks have partial charges. Remember, each of the up quarks are gonna have a two-thirds positive charge and that down quark is gonna have a negative one-third uh, E or a negative one-third elementary charge. But those quarks don't exist by themselves. They always are together as one object. And you can see that they all add up, if I add up all those charges, to one or a whole number of the elementary charge. And so again, if we're looking at an atom, what's it made up of? Protons, neutrons, and electrons. So those po protons are in the nucleus with the neutrons and then electrons outside. Protons have a positive E or a positive elementary charge. Neutrons have no charge and electrons have a negative E, even though the mass of all these objects is going to be different. And so did you learn to challenge the claim that an electric charge smaller than the elementary charge has been isolated? Again, it's quantized and I hope that was helpful.